Hi everyone. When you build a system, the goal is not to build a system without any failures, uh, but the goal is actually to build a system which has the ability to handle failures, right? Uh, so an uh, ideal resilient system actually has the ability to handle or recover from the failures as soon as possible. So in this video, we are going to talk about one such kind of failure, uh, which is transient faults. Transient faults are actually temporary issues that could occur in any distributed system and more often and most of the times these issues are self-correcting. So you ever wonder that you uh, sometimes you might face some issues in your computer or some abnormal behavior in your computer and then if you just restart your computer it might work. Or sometimes you might want to send a text message to someone and the message might fail. And if you do a retry uh, of the same message it might succeed, right? Nobody is actually fixing the issue for you but just doing a retry would make the message successful uh, delivery. So these kind of temporary issues or transient faults could also occur in any distributed system. Uh, and these issues are actually unavoidable and it's our responsibility to build the system which has the ability to handle those failures gracefully. Imagine you have two services, you have a service A and a service B and these two services are communicating to each other. Say the service A has to talk to the service B to get some data. Now in such scenarios, if the service B is actually returning a failure response uh, because there might be some kind of a transient fault or temporary issues in the service B side. In that scenario, if the service A do a retry on the same request after some time, there is a high possibility that the request will succeed. And this is what we call as handling the transient faults. But also we have to keep in mind that we cannot go ahead and retry all the failure responses. Because sometimes uh, the, the failure at the service B side may not be because of the transient fault, it might be because, because of a, some kind of a permanent issue in the service B. So that time if you keep doing the retry on the service B, it might make the situation even worse. It might put your system in danger, right? So the service A, the client should have the ability to determine uh, whether we should do a retry or not. And to do that, you should have the developer should have some good idea on what is transient faults and what are all the different scenarios uh, where the transient fault could occur. So one such uh, cause is one of the common cause of the transient fault is network. And I, I have been saying this in most of the videos that network is one of the unreliable factor in distributed system. Uh, because even now you can try this, you can open another tab in the browser and do a speed test you will get some value, right? some 50 Mbps or 100 Mbps of speed. And after some time, you do the same speed test, you might get a different value. Maybe the value is closer to the one that you received before, but it's not exactly the same. Because network is inconsistent, it's not stable all the time. Because there are a lot of factors that actually decides the reliability of the network. And even in this case, right, the service A and service B communication the traffic from the service A has to go through a lot of different network components. Like it needs to go through the DNS servers, it might have to go through the load balancers, switches and routers. So any issue or any fault in these components can actually result in a failure. So uh, doing a retry on those kind of a transient faults can actually result in a positive response. So that's one of the common causes of transient faults. And another common cause of transient fault is busy server. So the service B, sometimes it might be busy handling the request from the other client or other applications. So it may not have enough capacity uh, to handle the request from the service C. So during that time, uh, you can also make a retry after some time. Because that time the service B might be free to handle the request from the service A and there is a high possibility that the request will get a positive response. Because imagine uh, you are hungry and you are going to a, a burger shop to get some hamburger. But what if the burger shop is completely crowded? Maybe you can wait in the shop uh, until the crowd is clear. Uh, but you may also have some other job to do. So you come back to your home and go to the shop after some time. So that's exactly what we are doing here. When the server B is busy uh, doing some other work, the service A will wait for some time and then it will do a retry after some time. Now the other thing that we have to keep in mind is when you do the retry, we cannot go ahead and do the retry indefinitely. Because we, also, we always need to have some kind of a limit on how long we can do the retry. Because if you keep uh, doing the retry indefinitely, you might 
uh, consume more CPU resources and you will put the system in a very bad situation, right? So you always have to keep a, a ray tray limit. And I would highly recommend to uh, have the ray limit as a configurable value so you can have a different value in your non-production environment and you can have a different value in your production environment. So in addition to the ray limit, we also need to consider the time interval between the successive retries because you cannot do the retry very immediately and that will also consume a lot of CPU resources. It will not uh, let the system do any other job during that period. So you need to give the service, you need to give the server a proper breathing time before you do the next retry. So that's what we call as retry interval. And there are two different types of retry interval we, we can actually have. One is one is static and one is dynamic. Say, uh, in case of static, you can actually say, okay, my retry interval is three seconds. So whenever the service B give a failure response to the service A, you actually do a retry after three seconds, after every three seconds. And then you will have a particular retry limit by which you will start doing the retry. Now, when you say dynamic retry, uh, when the service B is actually returning a failure response, first you will just wait for one second and then you do a retry. And in case even after that, if the service B is again returning a failure response, then you will wait for three seconds and then you do a retry. And then five seconds and then maybe ten seconds, then you do a retry. So basically you exponentially increase the retry interval between the successive retries. So this will give the service enough breathing space before it do the next retry. And this process is what we also call as exponential backup. So far we have seen uh, how to handle the transient faults using the retry mechanism, right? So, uh, but we also need to understand how does the service A, how does the client will determine when or when not to do the retry, right? So basically the idea is the service B should uh, return, uh, should have some information in the response, in the failure response, uh, which should help the service A to decide whether or not to do the retry. Say so for example, if the service B is actually returning a failure response, it should include proper response code and error message by which the service A can make, make the decision. Say so for example, if the service B is actually returning a uh, failure response with 401 response code, which means unauthorized, uh, you can actually say there is no point in doing the retry for these kind of failure responses. Because 401 unauthorized means you sent an invalid credentials to the server and there is no point in doing the retry. Unless you fix the credentials, the service is not going to return a positive response, right? Also, similarly, uh, if the response code is 404 or 403, that is also implying there is something wrong in the request itself from the client side. So there is no point in doing the retry you have to fix the request from the client side. There is no issue in the server side. But in case if the service is actually returning a response code, something like uh, 503, service unavailable, which means the service is not available at that moment to handle the request. The service might be busy handling other requests or the server might be down for some maintenance uh, reasons. So during those scenarios, it is actually worth doing a retry. Maybe after some time, the service might become available. So if you do a retry, there is more high possibility that the request will succeed. Also, sometimes the server can include some additional information as well in the response uh, by which the service A can do some better decisions. Like for example, uh, the service B can actually include a response header called retry after. So this should inform the service A how long the service A have to wait before it do the retry. So those kind of additional information from the server also will help to make the right decision. And uh, yeah, so, so far we have seen uh, what is transient faults and what are the different occasions the transient faults could occur and what are the uh, different uh, mechanisms available to handle such failures. Uh, I hope this video is really useful to you. Thanks a lot for watching. Audio